Hey everybody, how's it going? Tonight we're going to do a little project video. So I go through tons and tons of batteries. Uh, I probably at least do 100 a month, sometimes more, sometimes less. It just depends on how the sales are going. And uh, I buy them in bulk and, and I really wanted a way to keep them up on my desk. So I had a first iteration where I had this nice little sort of desktop style magazine. You load them from the top, you pop them out the bottom. Uh, and it's great, but it only holds about 12. And I really want to hold all 48 on the desk at one time. And so this video is going to be a little bit of design. It's going to be a little bit of printing, a little bit of assembly. And I'll leave chapter markers in in case you want to go back and forth. And then I'll post the link wherever I put the, like Maker World or Thingiverse or maybe both, whatever. And then you can, if you want to print it out, uh, feel free. Um, so here we go. So the first thing we're going to do here is jump into Fusion. And since I'm modeling a battery holder, I need to first model the batteries. So I'm just going through laying out the 2D of what I want this pattern to look like as it lays sort of here on its side. And so in order to increase the, to double my capacity without doubling the size of my current battery holder is I need to do this little stacked uh, layout or this sort of, I don't know, serpentine layout. And I've drawn that line up at about, I don't know, 45-ish degrees just to give me a reference point. And then I'm going to basically... Uh, move and use the copy command and duplicate to essentially just align these things up on the same line as we go. I'm going to model in all 24 that I want to hold in one one magazine um, and then go from there. I'm going to basically draw in a reference line here for the bottom and the top um, and I'm going to keep the tolerances here pretty tight. I think one of the the, in my first iteration, the one of the mistakes I made was just making it a little bit too sloppy uh, from a tolerance perspective. So things like to move around quite a bit. And then I'm just going to close in the shape here. Uh, and then that'll give me a reference point to actually build the lines around. I'm going to go ahead and extrude the batteries up so I have a full, uh, full model of how all the batteries are going to lay in. Trimmed off all the excess lines, offset the walls extruded everything up so that I could start to get a better representation of how this holder is going to look. I then thought about, I wanted to model in these teeth around the bottom, and that would just sort of force um, each one of the batteries as they're rolling down so they don't quite stack on top of each other all the way down. I want them to be a little bit of a, of a step as they're moving through to help to help navigate this serpentine layout that I want. Uh, so as they drop in, it basically hit that ramp, stack itself, things like that. And it works okay. I think in retrospect, I may not have needed this. Uh, you might see that in the final product here, but uh, maybe in, in version three, I'll get rid of that to see if I can, um, see if it makes a difference here. So modeling everything out, uh, now bringing in the walls, extruding the walls up, I probably made these walls a little bit too thin, um, so I may thicken those just a bit as well. Uh, but everything's starting to come together here. So now I'm just modeling in where the batteries are actually going to pop out here. So I've just sketched in a circle, trimmed off some of the excess, I'm extruding that down. Uh, and that gives me plenty of room to basically push out each one of the batteries as they fall to the bottom here. Um, leaving not that openness, that complete openness like in the first version um, as I'm dropping in the batteries. Those, the, they do kind of want to fly around. I'm uh, making this little window on the top here so I can see exactly how much uh, capacity I have left. And then uh, dropping in a window at the top so I can actually load the batteries. So with this being a gravity feed, I am just trying to make sure that I allow it to uh, allow some shapes internally to help guide the batteries down where I want them to go. And the next piece here is actually building the base. And I want to be cognizant of, you know, not being wasteful with material. So while the base does look big, you can use tricks like hollowing it out, um, using the offset command here again, and actually just making, you know, this is probably 80% blank here. I just need some structure so this thing doesn't tip over. And uh, counting everything up, just make sure I'm in good shape. And 
and now I'm making the hole. So being a prototype, I don't I don't want to print this all in one go. Um, it's going to be tough to print this all in one piece since it's a closed shape. There's tons of you know potential support material. So I'm actually just going to use some filament holes to uh, make the two pieces together, and then potentially just you know uh, plastic weld it or just melt the plastic using like my uh, my soldering iron to fuse the parts together. I'll use the um, I'll use filament to just guide the piece together so it's straight and narrow. Uh, in future iterations, when I get closer to like a full, you know, I guess a finished product, I'll make this a bit more permanent from a structure perspective. Um, sketching a reference line and then splitting this guy down the middle. Now I can bring it into Orca and I can align everything. I really wanted to try and print this all in one go. Orca was giving me a couple of fits around alignment, but I did end up getting it to the point where I can fit everything all on one build plate. Um, and just try and get a little bit tricky with uh, with brims and extra support so they didn't have too much lifting around the corners. Uh, I had a couple of problems with this in the final, but you can see here Ridley's trying to space save on time and material. I did not go crazy with it. I should have probably um, made the filament holes just a bit bigger because I did have to go drill them out. So there we go, that's iteration two. So I've managed to double the capacity of the batteries on my desktop without doubling the size. It's not perfect by any means. I'm gonna to continue to iterate through this and try and make it a bit smoother and maybe even increase capacity a bit more.